Here we're going to be looking at bad debt or uncollectible debt and we're going to be looking at the direct write-off method and we'll compare it to the allowance method. So what are we talking about here? We're going to have some accounts receivable on our balance sheet here and not all those accounts receivable are going to be collectible and they're going to be recognized as bad debt or uncollectible debt here uh, as bad debt expense here on our income statement. And we also have an uh, allowance for a doubtful account or a contra account here for our accounts receivable and we would have an amount here listed or estimated amount here for that. So let's go and define what we're talking about here. So we're going to be looking at this bad debt or uncollectible debt. We're going to be looking the direct at the direct write-off method and we'll compare it here with the allowance method for specific debt here. So first for our bad debt based on the direct write-off method. Now with the direct write-off method that's used for tax purposes. No entry is made until a specific accounts has definitely been established as uncollectible. Then the loss is recorded by crediting the accounts receivable and debiting the bad debt expense. And again, it's used for tax purposes here. So uh, to expand on this direct write-off method, it records the bad debt in the period in which it is determined that the specific receivable cannot be collected. It records facts, not estimates, and assumes that a good accounts receivable results from each sale, and later events dictate if the account is uncollectible wor or worthless. For the direct write-off method, number one, it usually fails to match costs with the revenues for the period, and number two, it does not result in receivables being stated at the estimated realizable value on the balance sheet. So let's go look at our example here. We have accounts receivable uh, sitting here at 400, debited for $450,000, and that would be at the end of <coughs> the 1231 year X1 here. And we also have an allowance for doubtful accounts or that contra account at uh, 20 sit credited here for $20,000 again at 1231 X1. But what's happened here on 115 X2 or the following year here, we determine that one of the receivables here in year X1 isn't, col isn't collectible. It's determined as bad debt here. And we would de we determine the amount here that was $4,000. So we determined that this receivable here is due in year X1, but not collectible here again until the second year, January 15th of the second year here. So for the direct write-off method, what we do is we directly reduce our accounts receivable. So we would credit our accounts receivable here for $4,000 and then on, the, on our balance sheet here and then on our income statement we would debit or increase our bad debt expense here by $4,000. So what we've done here is we've taken the, this accounts receivable at $450,000, reduced it by the $4,000 amount here for the bad debt and our accounts receivable here is sitting at $446,000. Now that's on 115x2 or the second year. So let's look at what, in, in, a, in this case where the direct write-off method here, it didn't affect our allowance account. So let's look at what uh, fails here with this direct write-off method. Number one, it fails to match costs with the revenues for the period here. So we had revenues here in X1 for $4,000, but we re didn't recognize the cost of the expense here until the second year here uh, for $4,000. And number two, the receivables not, are not stated at the estimated realized value here. So we had receivables here of $450,000, and then our allowance for doubtful accounts here was at $20,000 thousand dollars that was the end end of 12 x1 here and the difference between uh, our uh, accounts receivable and our allowance account here would be the net realizable amount here for our accounts receivable so let's go look at our calculations here and for our net realizable value here on 1231x1, we had accounts receivable here of 450000 less the allowance for our doubtful accounts here that we estimated at 20000 So the net realizable value would have been $430,000 for our accounts receivable. Now looking at our net realized value here for 115x2 or the following year here on uh, January 15th. Accounts receivable, that was reduced by that $4,000 amount here for our bad debt expense. It was reduced here to $446,000, less the allowance for the doubtful accounts would remain the same here at $20,000. So the net realized value here was $426,000. Now the bad debt here, the $4,000 should have been realized here in X1, which would have changed our realized value here. It would, the $430,000 
thousand dollars here is overstated here, and that should have been it should have the bad debt. Had we known it was bad that it would match uh, revenues and expenses here and would have reduced here our net realized value by $4,000. Now, uh, both year one and year two are misstated. Year one here would be overstated by the amount of the bad debt that we didn't recognize for that revenue that we recognized for that year here. And then for year X2, we recognized the bad debt here of $4,000, but uh, it really was from revenue earned here in year X1. So we have the net realized values aren't sitting at the amounts that they should be. Okay, now let's look at how we'd use this allowance method here to write off bad debt for individual accounts here that would be written off here. Now remember the allowance method, it's usually based on a percent of sales or a percent of receivables, which would represent a composite amount rather than a specific account here. So what we would do with the allowance method here and going through our, looking at our example here where we have our accounts receivable on our balance sheet, again, the same example as that we had uh, for the uh, direct write off method here. So we have $450,000 sitting at the beginning of the or at the end of the year here in our accounts receivable on 1231x1 and then we have an, an estimated amount of $20,000 here in our allowance for doubtful accounts sitting or credited here at the uh, end of the first year on 1231x1. So we've uh, same example as before here. On 115x2 here, the following year, we determined that there was a $4,000 account or a, that would re was receivable here in year X1, and we determined that it was uncollectible or bad debt here in on 12, a 115x2. So what we would do here with this allowance method, again, we would directly write off our accounts receivable, reduce our accounts receivable by $4,000, but instead of um, going and debiting the um, bad debt expense on the income statement, we go to this allowance account here, our doubtful account here for our allowance here on our accounts receivable. And we would debit that here, reduce that here by $4,000. So what we've done in effect here is we reduced our accounts receivable by from $450,000 down to $446,000 by the amount that we were writing off here of $4,000. And then our allowance for our doubtful account, we also reduced that here uh, from $20,000 by the $4,000 we're writing off here down to $16,000. And that's again on 115x2 here. So let's look at how our, it would affect our net realizable value here. So at 1231x1, our accounts receivable was sitting at $450,000, less our allowance for our doubtful account here at $20,000 here. So our net realized value here on 1231x1 here is $430,000. Now, looking at 115x2, our net realizable value, we have our accounts receivable that we reduced here by $4,000 to $446,000. And then also our uh, less our allowance or a doubtful account here, our allowance for doubtful accounts, we'd also reduce that here by $4,000 down to $16,000. So uh, taking the, uh, subtracting, uh, the, subtracting out our allowance for doubtful accounts here from our accounts receivable gives us a net realizable value here of $430,000. So you can see our net realizable value here in 12 31x1, $430,000 matches the net realized value here on 115x2 of $430,000. And again, notice that the entry reduces both the allowance account and the related receivable and has no impact here on the income statement. We didn't recognize anything on the income statement as a bad debt expense. And then further consider that the write-off has no impact here on the net realized value of the receivables on the balance sheet. So it didn't, we didn't reduce our receivables here and it had no effect here on our receivables as a net realizable amount here on the balance sheet by taking, by using the allowance method here to reduce that bad debt. Again, just in summary here, using the allowance method, we would reduce our accounts receivable by the amount of bad debt that we recognize for that specific account. And then the corresponding, uh, in the credit here, the corresponding debit entry would be to our allowance for doubtful accounts for that same amount here, which would reduce our allowance for doubtful accounts.